If you think content creation matters and you're looking to implement a great strategy for 2023, you are in the right place. In today's episode of the Prime People Podcast, I am bringing on an expert in the space, Tony Salazar. I've known him for a little while. It's been amazing to see how the leveling up of the quality of content he's producing is impactful. But more than that, he actually runs an agency and a production company down south, and they are doing unbelievable things with content and video, selling multi-million dollar properties in real estate. But he's somebody that extends beyond the real estate space. So if you're somebody that is in business, I don't care if you have a custom sneaker shop, if you're in real estate or you're a mortgage agent, this episode is going to give you a ton of value. I'll tell you that personally, myself, I've put a lot of thought into what is our content strategy for 2023. So I'm going to share some of those nuggets. We're going to talk about the platforms. We're going to talk about how we got into the business, but let's not waste any more time. Let's bring him on. Mr. Tony, how are you doing today, my man? Justin, how are you, man? Thank you so much. Apologize for that. I'm good. Out of focus. Oh, you just have- you're good, brother. I like your setup. Look at that. It's all about quality, it. right? Have my assistant come change the angle here in a second. I was dialing it in. But yeah, thank you so much for the introduction. Happy to be here. Yeah, how is sunny Florida right now? It's beautiful. It's actually not sunny, but we do have a little bit of warm weather, although we are going to be getting some of your weather for Christmas. We have uh, like 33 degrees Fahrenheit on Christmas Day, which is rare for us. So we've got a little bit of a cold front coming down. Well, I just got told we are going to have 104 kilometer an hour winds in an absolute blizzard. My daughter was praying for a white Christmas, so I apologize to everybody in Canada and everybody stateside. The uh, the snowy cold Turtle. effect is probably because of us, right? But yeah, let's talk so content. Funny. I mean, you're a dynamic dude. We're going to get into your story. I mean, you were an influencer and you were doing brand sponsorships for On It. You're a jujitsu wizard competed at a super high level which is near and dear to my heart We're definitely going to dig into that but like let's dig into the content piece first because that's what people are here for how do you think people can create better content going into 2023 yeah so we'll jump into it i i saw the introduction i really appreciate that obviously i've had eight limbs creative my business for 10 years here and we are a full service real estate media company and what happened was we got into you know servicing so many agents and we realized that these agents were truly just lost in content creation. And I think a lot of it comes with the nature of the business. They do have a very strenuous job. A, a real estate agent that's, that's falling into the business is going to have tons of phone calls, tons of client meetings, showings, things going on. So it's not going to line up for them to really take the time to learn content creation very well, especially if they're learning it via the YouTube way that most people learn. So if you go on YouTube, so we, my team and I created a course called seven day social realtor to teach the business of content creation for specifically real estate agents to themselves. And the difference in what this is, is that it's not a content creation course that is meant to teach a real estate agent to become a real estate videographer, a real estate photographer. It's meant to become a real estate solo content creator. So we still have a very successful agency here, but we're trying to teach everyone to use this Swiss army knife. They all have and create daily good content. So we put that together and, and yeah, content creation is a whole beast. We can get into each level, but, but we have a, a very inclusive course for this that, that we released a month ago and it's how we have had a phenomenal launch, phenomenal feedback so far. We flew out to Houston, Texas with an entrepreneur friend of mine that owns a brokerage and he actually has a private jet. It was my first time going on a private jet to go on a G4. Awesome. And we flew out to Houston and did Austin. Did you shoot content when you were on the jet? Oh, did you, you actually you shoot content and capture oh, some of that? Of course we did. Of course we did. We had to, right? And little Andrew Tate, top G style content. But we, <laughs> you know, he he's positioning us with his large brokerage to help position, you know, eight lens creative and seven day social to strengthen their brokerage. And seven day social is what's catching the attention of so many real estate professionals now because yeah. it is something that, that real estate agents are just lacking. How to think like a shooter, how to pull that phone out and begin to shoot and edit and post and use the day to day situations, day to day conversations and interactions they're having for content that generates leads for them. Yeah, it's fascinating. I mean, if you go way back to our origin story, shout out to Alexander Gonzalez. I'll send him the link to this replay. Um, He connected us. I remember hopping on a phone call with you back, back in the day and just chatting yeah. about content production yeah. and real estate agencies. And, and really like we have Prime Media Productions, which creates the same thing as what you're talking about. We do very, very high end production, but it's real estate photography and videography exclusively for Prime. Now, the interesting thing is we did get into that space where so many people were calling us to shoot content for them, but some of them from a budget standpoint, I'm like, I'd rather teach you how to actually do the thing than actually try and just do it for you because the economics aren't going to work out. You're going to be paying me a $10,000 retainer per month. When in reality, I think most people can do the 80% of content themselves and then put a couple really nice show pieces in there and maybe you do some more strategic advertising. But I think- Perfectly you know, said. What it, 
when I think back to your influencer days with on it, like you were a content creator before being a content creator was deemed like cool. And I think organically you knew how to do that, how to capture those lifestyle photos and stuff just by doing it. So why don't you explain that origin story? How did you get the, the sponsorship with on it and how were you shooting content back then? Yeah. Yeah. So I was competing in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and I was like early to that game as well. Like when I start, first started, you know, I first started training Jiu Jitsu, it was 2005 and there wasn't even a lot of YouTube content on BJJ. Sure. So I fell into it just by, you know, by being lucky. And I had a phenomenal coach in a small hometown that I was in in Florida that moved here from Rio de Janeiro to pursue a career as an architect. So he just, it was just an alignment. Mm-hmm. He was teaching some classes at a local like recreation center. Sure. And then quickly he ended up making that a full-time career. And he makes well over half a million dollars a year now with a huge wow. Jitsu Academy. And, you know, he's a multiple time world champion Sure, so it was a cool story there, but I was beginning sponsored. I began sponsored on it through Instagram. Just, I was taking their products already. Cause Joe Rogan would talk about it on the Joe Rogan podcast. And I messaged them and said, Hey, would you like to sponsor me? And they said, yes, we'd love to. So I, or the on it patch on my gi. They started asking me to create content so they can use it for their social media early. And at this time, creating content, I maybe had a GoPro that I'd play around with every now and then, but I really wouldn't use it. So um, I fell into a, a YouTuber named Casey Neistat. Are you familiar with this guy? Yeah. So I started watching Casey Neistat and I started watching this daily vlog style and this content creation style. And I was like, wow, like this is something that I, I really like to do. So I bought my first camera. And I started just daily filling my lifestyle, my vlogs, and I would edit the stuff and put it on YouTube, put it on Instagram to support how I trained, how on it helped my lifestyle and how my supplement sponsors helped my lifestyle. Then I fell in love with it. And what kind of led to me getting in the video business was I was always carrying this vlog rig around with a Vendy tripod, a microphone and a Canon 70D. And so I got so known in my town for always having to be the guy with the camera. And so when people started asking, hey, can you come film this thing? We got this thing. Can you come film this thing? I was doing like small gigs for fun because I was having fun with the process. And it kind of led to me going, I think there's a business here that I can run. And, you know, here we are 10 years later. So it came from that. And you love it. And that's the interesting thing. Like I'll break down a couple pieces that I really want people to take as a lesson. One, you asked for the sponsorship. You were doing something you loved. You were paying attention to the ecosystem and what was happening out there. And you know, you reached out to on it and they said yes, because probably timing wise, it wasn't a very noisy space. And they're like, this guy's doing some pretty cool stuff. He's got the look. He's actually a practitioner. Mm-hmm. Go for it. I love the second thing that you pointed out. Casey Neistat's one of my top all time. Um, for me, it's Peter McKinnon, okay. Casey Neistat. There's like an unknown fly fishing channel called Tight Loops that I absolutely love. Sir Hant is up there as well. And uh, I would say the future is probably another really good YouTuber that I look at to for inspo. But yep. mentally, you broke down their shot list. And I think that's something a lot of people miss when they do content creation is they're not breaking down like the actual shot list and creating a story and you story told you're like, I got my camera, got my setup. I'm doing like a vlog like Casey, what's the intro, what's the body, what's the purpose of this story? How do you think people can really break down a shot list or tell a better story? Cause I feel there's a lot of just scattergun content out there. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a bigger subject to get into Justin. And that's what we put our course together for. So content creation is a business in itself and kind of how we were thinking of it is like, it's, you know, we strategize with our clients. Now we do a lot of monthly branding content for our clients. So we help agents do very similar content to what you're doing, which is get to know you. We kind of break it down to two areas where it's like ads are hitting a cold market. People don't know who you are. I love to quote when I do, I do presentations. Like I would teach at brokerages and events. I actually just got booked for an 800 realtor event for February, my biggest one yet. That I'm going to be speaking and teaching at. And we start with this quote from Alex Hermosi, which is you have to remember that your ideal client doesn't know who you are, what you do, how it works. They're in a rush and they have a third grade education. And so if you approach it from those, those pillars and you can clarify that initially with your hook, with your messaging, with what you're doing, it really helps every time. So content breaks down into ads, which are hitting a cold market, Instagram, Facebook, and then get to know you content, which is organic social media. So the idea would be like, we're going to bring in the real estate world, we're going to bring potential clients into your realm, into your social media pages through cold content. And then once there, you need to have tons of lifestyle, get to know you podcast style, interview style, introspective, so they can say who you are, how you speak, who you naturally show up as in the world. And they can say, you know what? I like this person. I'm going to work with them. So, I mean, there's a whole strategy. We, you know, it's, it's hard to go into it in this way, but we do break that sure. down in our course on getting to know who you are and then helping people get through the limiting belief of, I shouldn't show who I am in the real estate world because you absolutely should. So our sections are about that. We say, hey, guys, you know, you are awesome on who you are. And the more of you you can be, the more confident you're going to become. Because the idea is, and this is a Brad Lee quote that I say all the time, you need to be the content. It's not really about creating content. They're already living your life. 
You just need to make it easy and think like a shooter when you're filming your life. And again, the day-to-day -day meetings, if you're going to go show a property to a buyer and they're out of state or they're far away, well, you need to make a video about that. So it's imagine giving a buyer, instead of just sending them a link with the house they might buy, imagine taking your phone out, cell phone stabilizer, filming a really nicely well done video tour of this property and a personalized intro from you to them on why yep. they think they're going to love that house and why they should look at it and you send it to them. They've really made such a different connection level. And when you can make that a 10 minute process of your day because you're already at the property anyways, it changes the game and creation for them. Yeah, and I do think that's one thing I learned over time just by doing it is, you know, I was always out documenting what I was doing and trying to share that with the world. Because again, I had zero money, but I had a phone and I had a lot of time on my hands. And that's something that I, I learned initially when I was in the business. I thought that it was strictly, hey, I'm Justin from ABC Real Estate. Do you know anybody looking to buy or sell a house? But in reality, that's not what attracted clients to me. It was, say, my knowledge of the Lake Huron coastline and the shifting water levels for lakefront buyers or what was happening from a development standpoint in London. And that's all from the real estate side. Where I find I even get more business is doing stuff like this, right? So we connect off channel. We have conversations around this. The reason yep. I started this podcast, just so everybody knows, was I have these conversations offline anyways. What I thought was interesting is I'm like, why don't I bring my relationships online and explain to them the power of relationship? You get to dig into your mind and your expertise, expose you to a whole audience of people you never met. But in reality, what people don't realize the benefit for my clients is anybody watching this that actually knows me that wants to go down to Florida, we have a real estate connection down there and we can literally do business outside of just content. So we're layering all the different things that we do, getting an endless amount of short form content that we can break down from this episode and it aligns with our business. But I think people don't realize that there is a holistic approach to business lifestyle content creation that they really need to yes. understand. Right. Yeah, well said. And now we talk about that a lot in our eight limbs creative, our media business, our done for you agency is you know, we we create content for agents when we get there with the agent in person. A lot of times I think that they want to uh, over strategize it. And so they want to kind of be like, oh, this is how I want to come off. This is how I want to come off. I'm like, let's just have a conversation. So one of the, some of the best content we get for agents as far as virality and engagement is I will set them up with a nice light. I set up kind of how I am here with a microphone and I'll just start talking to them. I'll just start asking them questions yeah. and get them talking and, and, and get them saying things just to me, not just ignore the camera now, you know, and let's just talk. And then when they get through an actual point in organic way, that's a clip. We clip that out, cut it as real, give it to them. And people are going to perceive that as so much more authentic because it's just something we're saying already. And so it is about that. It's about think like a shooter and think like, hey, you're already having this conversation. Just record it all. And then obviously what, what does slow people down, even if people do start to record it, is now knowing how to produce and edit the content. That's one of the biggest deterrents. So that was a big portion of how we created with this program was to help them learn to edit quickly on their phone, streamline that process, and get the content out and posted. An analogy I used from Casey Neistat that I've carried into the business and my own personal content creation journey has been, uh, you know, not overthinking it so much where you, the, the, the statement is 80% out the door will always make you more money than 100% in the drawer. Amen. You follow? Yeah. So it's like, hey, I got a real, hey, it's not perfect. Hey, there might be a typo in the caption. I don't care. I'm going to post it on, you know, the messaging I want. Boom. Because by the time you're worried about that one typo, I posted four more pieces of content. And I'm yeah. just out and I'm inside and I'm in mind inside and mind in real estate. That's so huge right now. I'm a, per give you a perfect example. We just shot a property that we co-presented and, and I know real estate's relative in different market centers, but here we are in Tampa and St. Pete, Florida. So we do have some luxury real estate waterfront properties, do a lot of that stuff. There's an iconic street in our area called Bayshore Boulevard in Tampa. It's like okay. the spot to live. It overlooks the water. It's, it's a, it's a spot. And you've got properties from 6 million up to 20 million down the strip. They're all mansions and they're, they're very, it's a very sought after area. We had an agent that we just did a co-presentation on a listing and it was a $7 million property, fully flipped, luxury, you know, smaller luxury house. And I, it was my birthday. I went to the Brokers Open Saturday. So I, I, the gentleman who owns the house and he flips multiple properties, I invite him out to dinner with us, just being nice if he wants to go after Brokers Open. He was like, yeah, I'd love to go. I have no plans. So awesome. he came to dinner with me and some friends for our birthday. I mean him, he sat right next to me, we talked all night, very successful real estate investor, 35 years old, worth about $50 million. And done his thing well. And so I said, Hey, how did you connect with that agent that you had list your property? This agent was one of my clients. And he's like, I moved to the area and I typed in real estate video in the area. She was the first one that came up and her content wow. looked good. That was it. No more investigation. Just boom, boom. Hey, I'm going to drop a $7 million listing on your lap because your content looks good. 
And so, and it was so cool because we do that woman's content, but it was cool because like, that's what that got her. She has content creation. She does a lot of her own stuff too. She's out, she's showing, she's, she's just an active on her social sure. in the community. She's going to local spots. She's tour guiding you through the restaurant in the neighborhoods. And that is what they want to see. You do a lot of that as well, but it's like, it's, it's the new digital billboard is what I tell people. Right. Yeah. I mean, for years I, I was openly mocked. I think even in my industry, when I was doing listing videos, agents would tell me like, why are you wasting your money on that? The market's amazing. And I'm like, oh, every time. I do a video. I'm showing people how I would sell their house as much as I'm yeah. selling this house. You're auditioning. We, we convert an insane amount of business from video and content. Like the Instagram is actually fascinating because when I do my live streams at my property shoots, I do like nine to 12 leads per listing on my lives. And people think it's just throwaway content. And I'm like, no, you don't understand. Like a, when I look at the people following me on Instagram, it's actually buyers, sellers, agents, people in the business. Like the audience is dialed in and the people DMing me convert to sales. But when yeah. I shoot the video and it lives there in perpetuity, you know, if I have somebody looking to sell a property, they're going to go on my channel and be like, I want that guy who talks as fast as I do is super excited to right, selling my right. property, right? The they alignment. want the energy. Yeah, the alignment. We, we talk about that all the time. We, we have this character in our course that we make fun of when we go teach. And we made up this character's name to kind of show you a certain type of person. Her name is Barb Barkman. And Barb Barkman is that agent that like tries to come off like a step for wife and is always struggling sure. and fumbling around, right? The idea is like Barb Barkman as a person isn't going to attract the luxury waterfront buyer who would rather have someone that's more business savvy and have like, like soccer mom attracting like entrepreneur. That's not really good alignment there. And mm -hmm. so the idea is like instead of the Barb Barkman's getting frustrated that the other agent got that client, go after the clients that like you for you. Sure. And attract them in. That, that's it. When the more you show yourself, for example, we had an agent last year and he calls and he wants, he wanted to make a lot of very uh, extreme, like political style content on real estate. Sure. And no matter where you fall on that, even me, and I'm known to be controversial. I was like, I don't know, man, that not, might not be the best idea for you. Like very pro one party, sure. pro one view. And we did it and it killed for him. Yeah. He did he, so He's going to well. slice and dice that he audience and, and they're he all going to follow him. Right? in front of the woodwork to work with them because they're like, oh, I agree with you 1000%. And based on this right now, I can't wait to have you sell my house. And he was like, it, I mean, it exploded his business so much so he's been too busy to even do media now because he's just doing too many <laughs> deals. And it was a successful tra transaction campaign. So it does make a difference when you create it. There must be something special about Tony Salazar because we got a packed house. I got a bunch of questions from the audience. So I'll pop yeah, these on in a second. If you're new to the Prime People podcast, a few different ways you can actually interact. You can be live on our YouTube channel. That is the number one place. You can ask questions live every Thursday, 1 to 2 p.m. You can listen to the audio podcast on Spotify, Apple, every other platform, or you can go to the Practical and Tactical Facebook group. We like to make it interactive. Um, I like to make it about the community, but let me go up to the top. I see Mr. Matt LaMarche is here. What's up, my man? Cassandra, I see you on the beach as well. Giovanni Luciani, thank you for being here. Matt had a question, actually. What do you think the future of content creation is in the real estate space, and what's it going to look like in 2023 and beyond? Yeah, it's going to be a requirement, Matt. I mean, that, this is this is a subject that I, that I speak about constantly. You're going to need to do it. Again, um, I'm here today promoting a course that we just launched called 7 Day Social Realtor, and we are going to be giving, right, for the rest of the year, 50% off this course with code Xmas50. So you guys can go feel free to check that out. Seven day social realtor. I'm suggesting you can put a link somewhere, but there's a yeah, video send me a link actually. I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna gift it uh, to one of my agents as well yeah. too. And we'll probably yeah. do some stuff internally with it. Yeah, I mean, so it's seven day social realtor. That's a brand we're gonna be teaching with that. The code is Xmas50, 50 percent off right now to end of the year. And so guys, it's gonna be an absolute requirement. It isn't something anymore that you can skip. And we had a very hot market in Florida what what happened was agents were able to sell properties with just cell phone photos because they were getting multiple offers boom boom right away mm -hmm. but the difference is the agents who were on video are constantly insight in mind now reference a study that I was with a, mel a mentor that would have the private jet I don't want to get into too much about him right now cuz he's got some things I had to sign some NDAs what he's doing but sure. this guy is uh he's just shy of a billion dollar net worth so he's a wow. very successful you know entrepreneur in the real estate space and uh, he, he referenced, he was huge on advertising, huge on being and seen on camera, huge on, he went huge in television in 2010. And I had did a podcast with him in the private jet. It was a cool content. I said, hey, what built your business? Video built my business. Explain to me why. And he says, he read a book called Blink. And there was a study they conducted where it showed uh, random members of society from criminals to priests to law enforcement officers to firefighters to just general service workers. And they quickly run through slideshows for random participants in a university. And they show them very fast paced, boom, 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 photos, like headshots. 
And at the end of it, they give them a few different ones to pick. And they said, who would you rather do business with? Who would you, who do you trust more? And they give them random. The only commonality they could find is the repetition of slides shown. Hmm. So they saw the criminal's face more times than the priest face. They view him as more trustworthy than they want to do business with him. Wow. Said, when I read this book and I understand this concept, we started pouring in 70%. This is his words into our monthly advertising budget where it almost made us go broke for that first year. He's like, Absolutely. we went so, and it's because it's time. He's like, television costs more than an internet now. He's like, but now he's, in, you know, that's why he's positioned with us. He's like, I am requiring all of our agents to do video marketing. You have to have that content out. So right now, if I ran a real estate team, which I do not, I'm a real estate professional, but I don't actually practice real estate in the business like the agents do. Mm -hmm. I would absolutely require them to have a plethora of personality reels on their page, as well as infotainment reels on their page, as well as I would require my agents to go in buddy systems at least two at a time to go view properties, especially within a brokerage and do video tours of the properties that someone else in their team is selling anyways. So well, somebody are, can shoot with them, right? So like yeah. one, doing the buddy system takes away the fear. You feel supported. I love exactly. that idea. We I mean, that two, you actually have a shooter with you. And I think yeah. people don't realize how easy it is. Like one super hack, I'll give it to people because I do this on my on my reels and my TikToks all the time, is I pull up my camera and all I do is I press and hold and I count in my head, one, two, three. And then I press and hold. I let it go. One, two, three. I do it again. One, two, three. Well, now I have nine seconds of video that I can use CapCut, splice it into a reel and I'm done. Right. Like I think people get scared of the technology and the gear and everything else. And sometimes having somebody with you, the playfulness yes. of that's going to allow you to do more content. Right. Beautiful. And we actually teach that. We teach you how to be so that the three pieces of gear they recommend people purchase. It's just three pieces of gear. It's a cell phone. It's all DJI cell phone stabilizer, DJI Osmo 6, DJI microphone system and DJI Mini 3 Pro drone. The Mini 3 Pro, I don't know if you guys know about this drone yet. It's just released now. And I've been flying drones for eight years since they were the size of a coffee table and they had a full size DSLR on them. <laughs> So now this drone, it rotates vertical. The drone can actually pivot oh, vertical. Wow. You can film for reels as well as film for landscape. And the beautiful part about it, I actually have one right here, is that uh, this is the size of it. It's very, very small. But the idea is you do not need a drone pilot's license anymore because they've, they've made the weight requirement so small. So no more pilot's license required to fly these anywhere in the U.S. Maybe Canada is the same. So the idea is... We teach agents how to go out with those three pieces of gear. And if they want to exclude this, not a problem. They don't need it, but it's a simple thousand dollar addition to your content creation where you can really get communities, really film your own properties. The idea is you're creating content that's going to be so much more engaging versus all the other agents. We, again, the Barb Barkmans, we make fun of who are walking around with the shaky camera, trying to talk. and It's not really watchable. So what we've taught you how to do is especially go out in a buddy system and create content for each other. So the idea would be, you're both incentivized. If, if me and Justin were agents and we're especially year one, year two agents and we're building up our brand, it's not all about him or all about me. It's like, hey, man, I'm going to shoot some cool stuff of you. You're going to shoot some cool stuff of me. And then we're going to go home and edit our own content. But now we're there for each other and we're both growing our brands. And that's another part. We'll lead into the next part that we teach a lot about in this program is collaborations. It doesn't need to be scarcity. You need to be looking for every way you can to help another agent get a lead and get business because that might be a perfect lead for them. So if you get that guy who's that, that, that you can tell is just not you, send them to someone else, scratch their back, tag them, co-collaborate posts with other real estate agents, share their followings, go to the local dog treat shop and tag them and really collaborate and lead with the abundance and help everyone else grow, which we all say want to make the world a better place. That is what that looks like. We learn content creation and then we use our content creation skills to help other people grow their brands. And whether they remember it or not and scratch your back, you've done something good. So you're going to feel better. But most time they will remember it. And before you know it, they're dropping abundance back on you. Yeah, I want to get into distribution and scheduling across multiple platforms. Before I do that, though, I want to anchor what you just said. Because I'm doing it right now with multiple people that I intend to have on the Prime People podcast. Ryan Pineda is a guy that I want to have on the podcast. He just mm -hmm. launched the book, The Wealthy Way. Super savvy real estate guy, kingdom led yep. entrepreneur, like really good dude. And it's funny because I go to Twitter and I see that he launches his stuff. I tag him in the Wealthy Way post. I buy the book. I'm in the Facebook community. And the way I'm going to get him on the podcast is just by being part of his ecosystem. Like I look at his tweets and when he tweets something and I retweet it or I comment, there's only like 20 people that have actually retweeted it. Guys got hundreds of thousands of followers. It's so easy to stand out if you're coming at it from truly a contribution perspective. Exactly. But I think so many people don't do that. Um, expand on that a little bit in terms of how you've made some connections using that type of Yeah, thing. perfect. So uh, before you were here, actually, have a, we, I just got done shooting a commercial. I'm in my studio office here. 
and I'm shooting a commercial for a high level nootropic called Newtopia. So I have them like high level entrepreneurs. They come here, they shoot testimonial and we've, we've, we're good in the brand. My friend David was just here and we were talking about this and there's a guy that I follow named Charles Covey, eight figure entrepreneur, great podcaster, incredible brand. I love his content. I reshare him all the time. I reshared his content the other day and I reshared him and tagged him. He slid in my DMs and was like, thanks brother. We have a conversation and I, you know, my podcast launches January 14th, eight limbs podcast, same concept here. We're going to be doing and immediately he's going to be my first guest. It's booked. It's deal. We're on there, there just go. because I shared his content. So, and he's a, he's got a bigger following than me. And going back to the Russell Brunson strategy, the concept of the dream 100, which is phenomenal for real estate agents or any entrepreneur to utilize this concept is very simple. A lot of people have never heard this before. So when you think about what the dream 100 is, is the dream 100 is the other hundred people who already have your audience you need to sell to. So a hundred yeah. people. And the reason, so on our, on our course page on seven days, social social realtor, we only follow people that are in our dream 100. That's why our follower, who we follow is small. Why? When we're on that account, we're navigating it. We're only seeing one, what kind of messaging they're using to reach this audience. We're seeing the conversations the audience is having with these other influencers, what the audience is responding to, right? And we can build relationships with other people. Hence, you are in my dream 100 because you have an audience of real estate agents. Sure. So for me, that works out great because now I can use this audience of yours and apply value and help them out. Realtors don't think like this. They're very scarcity. Perfect example 100%. of this is in our local media business. Um, we're a very successful agency. We cover we cover seven different large cities and we do numbers that most people probably wouldn't really be able to fathom for a real estate media company because they're used to thinking about photographers. But we have a large social media on here and you know we've got 3,800 local people. We're not trying to have nationwide. These are local people that follow our page. Great engagement. Real estate agents only, like there's some that only engage with content that's their properties. Bro, They never me. double tap another person's listing. They never, and I'm like, listen, like, Make some friends, help these people out. They're they're doing the same thing you're doing. They're a person trying to provide for the family. Wouldn't it help you to just like scratch more backs and, and fist bump more people? And it's like we we deal with it a lot. So I'm really trying to help agents understand, engage with others and co-collaborate with others. So if you've got another agent, if you're like if you're a you know, you're a beautiful girl, go collaborate with someone that's got a different brand than you. Maybe this person, like you're a, maybe you're a 25 year old ex NFL cheerleader and you're a real estate agent. Go collaborate with the guy who's 50 years old is a Southern guy. He's like a family man. You're, access different audiences. There's just so much room for that when you think about who your demographic is and you can really grow like that. Yeah, the last kind of tip I'll layer onto that too is like our relationship, for example. For me, I'm very big in terms of watching how tr people treat other people and authenticity in conversations, right? So I mean, you and I talked hours probably on end. You hit me yeah. up asking me some questions. I hit you up asking you yeah. some questions. In every single interaction, you know, there was never a, a hook or a, well, I'm not going to tell you that unless you give me that. Like you sent me documents, I sent you yeah. stuff. And yeah. it's really led to a relationship where I truly do think it is collaboration over competition. Somebody could be your Dude. competitor, but if you can move them from competitor to collaborator, that's a world that I want to live in. And actually Michael Saracini, um, who's the head of Keyspire with Scott McGilvery, taught me that. He's like, there's predators, there's parasites, there's competitors and collaborators. On my podcast, he said that. He's like, you know, predators try and take advantage of people. Parasites just try and like get up next to them and you can smell Last that. Time. Under the wink, yeah. Competitors are like, well, I, you got a production company. I got a production company. Like I can do a course, you do a course. But it's like people could take my course and your course and we're all better for it. And that's collaboration. So I love how you yeah. broke that down. And I could and talk to you for add, hours about that. But yeah. what's your I last thoughts one on part it? To that would be. The way I try to approach this like this, like I'm a lifelong competitor, athletic competitor. And so deep down, I really do love to win and I love to compete. But the way I look at that is like I use the competitiveness that that motivates me to get up and get moving. I'm up at 530 every day and I work out first thing so I can get my workout done before the day starts. So it's like it's OK if you're a competitive person, it's OK to accept and understand and be aware that, yes, there are other agents in my market. And yes, they do want this listing. It's okay to feel that and go, well, I need to work hard. Just let that fuel you to take massive action. But part of the massive action you take should still be to give to others. That's it. It's like, I don't, I'm not telling people, I would never tell, don't be competitive. I think if people stop being competitive, they would start to lose really. Because if you're not competing, you're just sitting back too much. It's like, no, you need to be in the game and still running. The guy's, he's here and he's trying to pass you up and you're still running, but it's friendly. It's like, hey man, like I love it. You're on, And if you tell, if you can tell that you've really pulled away from someone and you really have already won the game, that's the point where you go, hey man, how can I help you? What do we need that I can show you? That's really what it's about because at the end of the day, 
how you feel is how you're going to be able to show up in the world. And if you feel like you're really contributing, you're, you're going you're gonna to take better action. The best quote I've ever heard is that the guy who said that money doesn't bring happiness hasn't given enough away yet. Very true. I mean, the jiu-jitsu mats are a great, great way to learn that, right? Like you, you're a high level jujitsu competitor. You know, I I went in the gym for years and it was fascinating to watch people come and go and the people that would contribute and the people that wouldn't, I was, I was almost too much of a talker when I was rolling and I would like, I would do something to a white belt and then I'd be like, let me show you how I did that. Like I was, I was so quick to be like, just do this, 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 and this, or this is how I led to that. But I learned that from other people. Like I got better rolling with black belts that would demolish me every time but like yeah. were very much there to, to see my success because they had been where i was and i was very much the one to try and stay away from the people who were spazzes or posturing or, or very again scarcity mindset they never lasted like they'd be in the gym for a certain period of time and they'd be out and i, I think that competitiveness in you and that kind of family environment as much as you can be competitive and you can roll with your boys and you can be competitive and have fun with it at the heart of it the gyms that i've seen succeed and the teams that i've seen succeed do have that camaraderie and at the end of the day are looking out for each other right yeah i agreed i agreed you just need need to look out for each other that's it i learned a lot from the jitsu lifestyle but but yeah it's in, in the real estate business it's competitive but it also you understand like these are people that if you if you step on my shoulder, you can reach the next brands even faster. So the idea is like yeah. if I get a big pull away and I've taken like right now in our area, I mean, we do own the market share for real estate media. There are other small photographers that sure they could consider them competitors, but they're not doing what we're doing anywhere near. Definitely not the volume, the numbers and the listings. So it's like sometimes these guys will follow and I'll reach out. Hey, man, if I can help you, let me know. I, I, I just want these guys to eat. I want them to be to feel good because I feel great. And it's like, you don't want to take from everybody. And so sometimes yeah, they, it drives you to be better too, though. Cause if they do come up and yeah. you see a kid come up and he does a cut you go. or a video and you're like, man, you're like, ah, I got, I got to sharpen my sword. Like 100%. it makes you better. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's it. That's it. Yeah. I, I definitely agree with yeah. that. So I got one more question for you. Then we'll go into the rapid fire. I'll get you out of here in a couple minutes. Um, I want to ask you something though. Once you've created the content on the distribution side, I'm not sure if that's something you guys do at the agency level. You know, oh. when you're posting content on multiple platforms, there's two, there's two minds of it really. One is take a piece of content, schedule it like on each platform to be released like week after week. So you're not stacking it all the same day. This day and age, I almost find that the algorithms are so deep and there's so much content. You could almost right. post it on every platform and it's organically going to do that on its own. How do you handle content distribution so you're not being too repetitive on people's feeds? Yeah. And so there's two sides to that. One, first of all, we have two full days in our course that are dedicated to content creation strategy, where to post and how to post, how to utilize each thing. But realistically, I don't try to avoid that. I actually try to make that happen. This is the Grant Cardone philosophy that I very much believe in. So the idea is like build a bonfire that's just so bright. They see it from a mile away. And if it's too hot for them, they leave the fire. And that's totally fine. So we, I do, you know, I, I post four pieces of content a day, every day to my personal page. And that goes to all platforms, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, that goes everywhere. All of them. Same thing with seven day social brand, same thing with eight limbs creative brand. We, we have a full-time person. That's all her job is, is to post media. And it requires her full-time effort all day. I would rather just have a million different little crab traps out there leading people back to the main place they can find us. And that, that's where an error I think people make is that we have agents that will deliver. We have, a, we have a real session we do. We call it batch reels or podcast reels. We'll show up, lighting, like I told you, an hour session. We give them 10 reels, okay? And a lot of agents do this frequently. Sure. I would like to see the agent post those 10 reels within two weeks. They should be done through them. Not let's extend those 10 reels over a month. Sure. I don't think that's the strategy. I think the strategy is always going to be speed. Speed's going to usually win. So you're going to go speed, 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 speed then volume. And then third will be quality, right? So we're like getting it out there, out there. You just don't know where it goes in day and age right now. A lot of people talk about the social media algorithms, but I truly don't think many people are understanding that like they think. And when you think algorithm, it really means audience. It is the audience. It's not some like ominous computer. No, it's just people. It's how people are responding. It's algorithm means audience. And so it's like, if they're, if they're loving it, they'll tell you if not, they're not, but don't let the audience engagement tell you if the content is good or not. Right. Because sometimes the, likes and views they don't, don't even watch dollars and cents. right 
Dude, an hour ago, Twitter, um, Elon posted on Twitter that they're now going to show views. He's like, the actual view numbers, he's like, is astounding. He's like, 90% of users will watch your content and never post or engage on it. So he's like, we're going to start right. posting that number so that you as a creator can see that. So I think that's great advice. Let's get into the rapid fire questions. Yeah. First thing, I always love asking this question. What's one podcast you'd recommend to people out there? Uh I actually don't listen to many podcasts besides Joe Rogan podcast experience. That was my OG podcast. That's how I got started. Um, besides that, I love Lewis House School of Greatness. And that's, that's yep, one that I watch. That's, and then in, Impact Theory. Great. And yeah, all three of those are phenomenal podcasts. So yep. people go check those out. Um, up to this point in either your personal life or your business career, what is the greatest lesson that you have learned? Having a daughter and what patience means. So when I have my daughter, she's four years old now. That was my lesson was so much of my life was dedicated to me and how fast I like to move and how my foot is on the gas pedal. And I, I had her, I know, because it was it was just the universe letting me know I need to slow things down and be present. So it was just more like, hey, there's a bigger picture here than just you and your goals. And now it's like leading this next generation of your DNA and, and, and what that means to me. Yeah, seasons of life. I think Matt Lamarche mm -hmm. popped in there as well and said, amen, brother, patience. I'm a girl dad as well. So I can echo that sentiment. Um, yep. What are you learning now that excites you? You're always probably in the process of learning. Maybe there's something new. What's on your radar that you are learning today? Yeah, great. Networking. I have been, um, you know, one of my practices that's changed my life in this last year of 8X my business in one year. And it was post-divorce. And I've really had this season of life that has exploded for me because I've got my focus back. And so a big practice of me has been, has been like journals. I wake up every morning and I write in this journal and I write down full two pages of affirmations, things that I'm saying about my desired future. And one that's been in there for about six months has been, I have a billionaire's network. I write that down repetitively every day and really think on it. And that's something that I really have realized no matter how productive you are, how ambitious you are, how much, how many degrees you have, if you have a very, very high level network, it's different. It's different how easy opportunities flow to you. And I think it was something that I realized from one of the Andrew Tate videos I came across. And he was saying that he's like, if you are in a room and people are not talking about what you're trying to get, you're in the wrong room. And so not everyone's on the path where they want a lot of money. However, this season of life I am, I am in that season of life where I do want to attract a lot of financial freedom and wealth. And so I'm realizing now that I'm starting to write it and I'm attracting these connections like crazy because I'm focused and thinking about it. Have you ever read The Go-Giver? I haven't. Do you like audiobooks or do you like paper? Oh, I do audio. Yeah, I did 46 books this year so far in Audible. Well, I'm going to, in about 10 minutes, I'm going to send you that audiobook yep. as a gift for being on the podcast. Okay. Phenomenal Love book that talks about that attraction and building a network. Yes. Um, next question How has failure shaped your life? Oh, tremendously. I mean, we go back to jujitsu. Failure has made me. I've been through it all from the divorce now to losing world championships in front of my friends and team where I didn't even want to entertain the idea. And it just makes you go back to the drawing board and get, for me, it was anger. It made me get angry at myself. And then I started thinking about, man, like if you relate to jujitsu, it was like when I would lose a match at Worlds and I was like, man, like was it that time I didn't wake up early? Was it that time I didn't finish that last run? Was it that time I didn't drill a little longer? And then you start to go, well, next time I'm not going to give myself any room for error. And that's transitioning into business now. So anytime you failed, you have to sit back and recess, go, yo, this was 100% my fault. Where was it my fault? Where did I lose control of this thing? And then it gives you a whole new perspective when you start again. So you're, you know, when you see people who are just too, too arrogant and they just don't believe there's any room for improvement, I hear a guy who hasn't failed enough, you know, mm -hmm. and that's usually because they're taking such safe action. They're not hitting failure. Well, I think that speaks to the quality of the guests on this podcast, because everyone I've asked that question to that I admire runs towards failure, straps it in the front seat yeah. and hits the gas pedal. Right. So yeah. I get that feeling 100%. Last, the most important question. This is the biggest moment of your life, Tony. You've hit the elevator button. You take it all the way up to the top of one prime tower, which actually overlooks the entire planet. One day, everybody on the planet is going to hear this podcast. What message do you have for them? Or what's one thing that we can give to add value to your life, something you're working on? This is an opportunity for you to get a message out to the whole prime nation and my platform. Um, yeah, that's, that's an easy one for me to say. It's that you are capable of so much more than you might feel like today. There are, are huge reservoirs of p potential inside everyone. And there's a time of your life, whether that you're 25 now or even you're 35, 45, and you just haven't accessed it yet, that you will suddenly realize, wait, I I'm incredibly powerful and I can squeeze out so much more. And whether that's to make an impact in your family's life 
or your own life. It's just focusing and getting effort out. I think that's been the biggest thing for me is that I lived so long focused on jujitsu and it was, I was obsessed with it. And then when I got into my marriage and I got out of the season, it was almost like I took the sabbatical where I was like, it's time to relax sure. and approach business as if business was the vacation because competing was just so hard and so strenuous. And then all of a sudden when I snapped in, I'm like, wait, no, business is so much more than that. And you can approach it so like with so much more effort. It is, like I said, 8X in one year is, is phenomenal results for us. So, and I'm very proud of the effort now. And so I think that really comes down to like fulfillment is the word we all search fulfillment, but what fulfills you can be different things. But I think for me and for most people, what you're going to lead to a life of not being fulfilled is if you're not reaching potential. And we all know it. Jordan Peterson says it best. If you sit on the side of your bed at night and you ask yourself, what's one thing that I could change that I would change that I should change, you'll get an answer and it won't be one you want to hear. And the more you ask yourself that question at night, truly inside, you'll get the answers. And if you start chipping away at, at taking away those parts of yourself, you get closer and closer to being someone you can really be proud of. And then the more proud of yourself you are, the more massive, bold action you're willing to take because you start to feel unbeatable. That's a phenomenal answer. I think having a purpose-driven life makes all the difference in the world. Uh, Grant Cardone, actually, I saw this on a tweet yesterday, said that, that he's never had an easy day and gone to bed well rested every day yeah. he's had a really tough day at work he sleeps like yeah. an absolute baby right and i think yeah. that's good lesson for everybody thank you so much for being on the podcast all thank of his you, links man. are in the show notes the links to the seven day social realtor course and everything else and we'll drop that gift code in there yeah, i yeah. really appreciate you brother and i'm sure thank there's you lots so much, more you're the man love it appreciate I you appreciate you. you'll be back on the episode later Absolutely. thanks again, Tony. all right thanks dude bye-bye